Ladies and gentlemen, the Tash is a constant in a disruptive world. Thanks, Gav. <laughs> this is my uh, second and potentially last uh, time closing uh, our air power conference. But in the tradition of air evolution, I'd have to say this has been the most interesting. It's been the most intellectually stimulating. And for me personally, one of the most uh, enjoyable of those conferences. So I'd like to thank everyone here for the part you played in making that so, uh, particularly to our sponsors, to Boeing, to L3, to Rolls-Royce, and to Defence Bank uh, for making this conference possible. When planning really began for this event, my direction to the organisers was that I wanted the presenters to challenge our preconceptions. And where appropriate to be critical of defence broadly, but also particularly to be critical of Air Force because in this disruptive world, we cannot indulge, as we've heard over the two days, in just using today's lens. We need to see the realities to the complexities and without illusions as to the challenges that we need to address. The speakers over the last two days have certainly meant my original intent. The Deputy Chief has done an excellent job of drawing together the issues that have been raised over the last couple of days, so I won't rehash what he's already covered. I would, however, like to thank the individual speakers for their efforts in preparing such excellent presentations, for their travel to Canberra, and the ability, like I've never really heard in too many places before, their ability to present on complex issues in a way that was relatively easily digestible, and in many cases, frank and fearless. Despite the best efforts of the presenters, it is, however, nearly impossible to leave this conference with a complete understanding of all of the elements that were covered. Therefore, I encourage you. I encourage you all to continue engaging with each other on these topics and do that long after we leave here today. So to support you in that future discussion, the conference planning team have ensured the presentations will be published and distributed to all that would like a copy. The contributions have deliberately had a future capability and disruptive technology focus. And as the Minister highlighted in her opening address, we're already living in a disruptive world. So we need to adapt and evolve within it. Since I joined the Air Force in 1979, my life, like yours, I lost my mother, my younger sister to cancer, my career, heck, they made me the chief, that's disruptive. <laughs> and the Air Force itself have been disrupted many times. I've witnessed a number of pivotal events that have required the Australian Defence Force to adapt. We adapted at the end of the Cold War, again in our involvement in East Timor. The Bali bombings, the 9-11 terrorist attack in New York, and of course, more recently, the emergence and the defeat of ISIS. But it's not just these type of events that cause or enable disruption. Technical advances are similarly significant. The exponential rise in the prominence of social media such as Twitter and Facebook, as well as a near real-time news reporting, continues to change how we communicate, consume and process information. These online platforms are readily available, they're relatively simple and have the ability to be used to our advantage, but they do expose us to far greater public scrutiny and can be used tactically against us, as we have heard. Our world is changing fast, and it will continue to do so. Ten years ago, smartphones, Facebook and Snapchat were just emerging. Now they are defining in our age. With these as exemplars, we need to identify opportunities to innovate and to be creative in solving the problems we face today and those that we might face tomorrow. I ask all of you here, in particular the members of the Australian Defence Force, how can we operate within disruptive environments? We need to use disruption to our advantage and to learn to deal with its effects as a degrading factor to our operations. In my view, we need to experience failure in training. 
not an 8v8 in a traditional sense, but an 8v we don't know. Any smoothly run conference, and this year has been exactly that, is only made possible by a lot of frantic activity initially, both in the lead up to and during the event. Many people have worked long days over many months to shape this conference. I, however, would like to particularly recognise the tireless efforts of Ms Sandra Finney and her team in what they have contributed, what they've worked on and what they've delivered to produce what I'm sure you'll agree has been another very successful conference. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask you to join me in congratulating Sandra and the organising team. I'd also like to thank our MCs, their Commodore Steve Edgeley and Mark Green have kept the program running along very smoothly. Thank you. Ahead of time, at times, which in conferences I've attended is a pretty rare thing. To our international guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to echo the Minister's opening words, highlighting that we all need to take an international approach in responding to our regional and our world events. As Chief, I've made international engagement one of my five strategic vectors that will enable the Royal Australian Air Force to truly become a fifth generation fighting force. This recognises that we collectively need to understand both technical and operational issues so we can cooperatively ensure a stable and secure global force. That is what makes your presence at this conference so important. Thank you for your participation over the past couple of days and I wish you all, those that are travelling, safe travels home. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to close the 2018 Royal Australian Air Force Air Power Conference. I thank you very much for being with us and hope perhaps to see you at the Williams Foundation event tomorrow and perhaps at Avalon in 2019. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is about air power. The most advanced fighter in the world. And it will make a truly game-changing difference to Air Force capability. Integration is the key. It's about the Navy, the Army and the Air Forces working together. It's not today, it's not next week, it's the next 10 years of change. Its ability to share information will increase the survivability and the capability of our other assets in the air, on the ground and in the water. Technology like this is keeping now and will in the future keep Australians safe. The ability to execute air combat missions which were previously beyond our scope. It's more than just a vision. It's about transforming our entire force to achieve an outcome. Transforming the way we think, transforming the way we operate and transforming our relationships with industry. I want our Air Force to place greater emphasis on ensuring our people have access to education and training and are able to exploit the full potential of our future platforms and systems so that by 2025 the Royal Australian Air Force will be one of the most advanced and integrated air forces in the world. <laughs>